Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And I pray, I ask, I implore, I beg, I supplicate that the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit who resurrects the dead, the Spirit who resurrected me, may come upon you right now, in this very moment, as you participate of this live transmission, and that He will give you direction in your understanding so that your faith may not be based on the Word of God with emotions, with feelings, but with a faith that is supernatural, a supernatural faith, a faith that comes from the Holy Spirit Himself, that this faith may give you understanding for you to know the will of God for your life and then have the courage to practice it because it's pointless to know the will of God and not to have the courage to practice it, isn't it? That's the reality. David had a heart after God's own heart and he still instead of obeying the voice of God, the word of God, he obeyed his heart and he destroyed his life. Obviously, we know that he reestablished himself, he repented, we know that. But this, or his repentance, didn't cancel out the fruit of his bad choices, the choice he made, the choices, the wrong choices he made. This is the reality. God dealt with David as, as a prince. He gave the best, but David's heart was corrupted because of a woman, which means he followed the voice of his heart, the voice of the God of this age. That's the reality. And then he had to reap the fruit. Up until the moment he died, he suffered the consequences of his choices. Of course, David was of God. You can only imagine if Jesus was called the son of David. It's because God allowed that to happen. So it's the origin of David. So still speaking about the God of this age, which we spoke about yesterday. The God of this age has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, those who do not believe, those who don't believe in God. And that's why there is a need for the person to believe in God so that they won't be blinded because when you believe in God indeed, the living God, not the God of wood, clay and metal, these gods that you find out there that is trying to satisfy everybody's desires. No, but the living God, the God of the Word, the God of the Bible, the Holy Bible, when you believe in Him, then you immerse, you dive your life, you put all of your strength in His Word, and then you reap the fruits of such choice. How wonderful, isn't it? But the voice of the God of this age continues to speak out loud out there. And of course, obviously, that those who think despise this voice. But those who don't have, those who don't reason, will accept it and will suffer. 
they will destroy their life. Have you noticed Paula's testimony? Did you see it? A beautiful woman, young, just 18 years old, and what did she want? She wanted money. And how many people have been making pacts with Satan, even in cemeteries, to become rich as well, to have a lot of money, 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 money. As if money would resolve people's problems. Poor them. They, I would say they are ignorant, spiritually speaking, because they think that by having money, they you have the power to resolve all of their problems. The God of this age says that, and people believe in it. People believe in this nonsense. Why? Because they see, especially nowadays with social media, people are there looking, looking with wide open eyes at those who are successful. But what they don't know is that those who seem to be so successful today, tomorrow they are going to be in the rubbish bin. That's the reality. They are successful in the exchange in the exchange of the pact they make with the devil. And by the way, I don't know if you knew, but you should know, but the celebrities from Hollywood, they make pacts with the devil in order to be successful. They make pacts with him. Because if they don't make a pact with the devil, they won't succeed, not in Hollywood. And throughout the world as well. And the silly ones, they accept this. Even politicians, they make pacts with the devil, with Satan, in order to have power. But they forget that the devil doesn't die. He doesn't die. And people's soul as well does not die. So one day... Whoever serves the devil here on earth will serve him throughout eternity. I mean, not serve, but to suffer with him for all eternity, because the devil will also suffer. Well, the God of this age, did you know that Jesus, when he was tempted in the desert by Satan, Satan took him to a very high place, a mountain, and said to him, he showed Jesus, you see these, all the greatness, all the beauty, all the wealth of this world, all of this is mine. And I will give it all if you just bow down and worship me. That's all. You don't have to serve me. Just worship me a little bit and that's it. It will be enough for me. Because the devil wanted to do with Jesus what he had done to Adam and Eve. He suggested, if Jesus was not in spirit, if Jesus wasn't fasting in that moment, if he wasn't watching, if he was, if he was not the son of the living God and didn't have his mind in the right place, so he would have paid attention to the devil. But as he, as he is the Lord of Lords, the living God, and above all, he had the discernment that that spirit, that demon, that Satan that was there offering him the whole world, he was going to suffer. That demon was one day going to perish for all eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone prepared for him. So Jesus knew he wasn't going to allow himself to lose the glory he already had and carried with himself, which is the glory of being the beloved son in him. I am well pleased. That's the voice he heard when he was baptized in water. 
This is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. When he was baptized in water and received the Holy Spirit, then he also heard this voice. And this has to happen with you as well, my friend. You who have been giving ears to the voice of the God of this age, you who have been suffering, you who are groaning, it's because you are giving ears to the voice of the God of this age. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness or in the darkness, but they will have the light of life, eternal life. So think well, my friend. You who have been living a life just like Paulus, the testimony that was posted there. You, your life is a living hell. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, not even the wicked, not even of the evil ones. And let alone in your destruction, in your suffering, in your pain. He suffers, God suffers with those who suffer. But what can he do? What can he do? You say, oh no, he can take me out of the situation. He can, but he cannot transgress your will. Your will is sovereign over your life, isn't it? You can be a slave of the devil, but your will remains always being yours. It's an authority. It's a power that you carry. And if you determine, if you say to yourself and to whoever is listening, whether Satan, whether God, whether the angels, whether the world, if you say, I do not accept this situation anymore. I do not accept I accept what the Lord Jesus offers me. He said, he guaranteed that he is the light of the world. And whoever follows him will have the light of life. And will walk in light. And will not trip over because... They will, be, they will be watching every step they give in their life, it, which means in their mind, in their intellect. So you determine that in Jesus' name. Do it. Do it right now. You are there perhaps preparing yourself to kill yourself. If you kill yourself, may I tell you the truth? May I? Won't you get offended? Well, if you get offended or not, I, I will speak the truth. When a person kills themselves, they take the right of making the choice by the light that Jesus offers. And then there is no way anymore. There is no salvation anymore. It's suffering, eternal suffering for all eternity. It's eternal for eternity, but it's the reality. There is no salvation anymore. No salvation. The Bible speaks about this. Judas killed himself. You can see what it says there about Judas. Therefore, my friend, don't do something silly because you are going to kill or you can kill the body. You can destroy the body because your will is sovereign, but you cannot destroy your soul. Your soul, which is suffering with depression, with insomnia, with anxiety, with the hell and misery and so on, your soul, this soul, this invisible body which is inside of you, for example, I am speaking, my soul is speaking through my mouth, using my intellect, using my eyes to see you, or to see you who are there watching, using my ears to hear, using my nose to, to smell, 
using my taste buds to taste food. That's my soul. My soul is what feels joy, feels sadness. It's my soul that feels pain, that feels well or unwell. It's my soul. Do you think that it's possible to kill this being, this being that cannot be seen or touched, that is invisible, but it's inside of you? And without this being, which is the soul, your body doesn't function, neither yours or mine or anybody's. We have a soul, a soul represented by the heart is what feels things, is what feels things. So, pay attention to what God speaks about the soul, about the heart. Pay attention to what he says. He says that the heart is deceitful. The heart, which is the soul, is deceitful. The text says, God said this. It wasn't a prophet. It was God himself who said, pay attention. The heart is deceitful above all things. Which means that the heart is the worst enemy of human beings because it is deceitful. More than politicians, many politicians, more than many salespeople. And on top of being deceitful, it is wicked, it is evil, evil. Your heart is like this. Your, the heart of man is like that. Human being's heart is like this. And you can add wickedness to that. Deceitful is the heart above all things. There is no one more deceitful than the heart, and on top of that, desperately wicked. And God leaves the question, who can know it? You don't know your heart. My friend, in order for us to survive in this world, in order for us to remain in the faith, to live by faith, and from faith to faith, and to remain saved, until our celestial promotion, we need to overcome our heart. We have to watch our heart. I have to watch my heart 24-7. You have to as well. You see that David had a heart after God's own heart, and still he fell. So you know that the God of this age is out there satisfying people's heart. And that's the problem. You see that the devil offered Jesus the whole world, all the glory, if only he worshipped him. My friend, my dear friend, if you are suffering, and I believe perhaps you are even a religious person, it doesn't matter the religion that you have, but you have there a heart which is always trying to deceive you, and it is cruel, it's evil and, and, and wicked. It's written here, God himself said that the heart is wicked. Who can know it? Only God knows the heart. So how am I going to resolve my problem, Bishop, with my heart? If we have the God of this age that is trying to satisfy our heart, that makes our heart take wrong decisions, which is the case of Paula, which is the testimony that they, at the age of 18, gave herself to Satan, making a pact with him to have a lot of money. And for 28 years, she served Satan. 28 years. In her life, she had money, but money didn't resolve her problems, didn't satisfy her needs. And the same thing, a person kills themselves, it will not resolve the problem of the soul, and they will suffer even more, because if he in life they were suffering, imagine in eternity. So, 
You who are watching me now, and you have your heart that is downcast and hurt, ill, full of emotions, full of grudges, grudges, resentments. Forgive. When you forgive that person, don't count on your heart to help you with that. You have to forgive here in the mind. Forgive by praying for that person, even if the heart of yours says, no, I don't want it. I want them to die and for the news to go around quickly and I'll be the first one to know. Even if your heart is screaming against your intellect, against your will, according to the will of God, which is to forgive, then pray for that person and be free from this curse of the grudge, because a grudge, my friend, is like a cancer to the soul. And when a person forgives, they are doing more good to their own selves, to their own selves, than to the person that one day hurt them. You are going to do something good to your soul. So, the heart is deceitful, the soul is deceitful, corrupt, perverse, wicked, who shall know it? On the other hand, we have Satan. The heart is inside of you, inside of us, isn't it? Our, our soul. And the devil is on the outside. He's outside. Trying to get to your heart. You have the voice of Satan there, trying you. But also, there is... The voice of God. And what set me free from Satan was the voice of God, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the Word of the Almighty. So, if we have a soul, and on one hand we have the voice of Satan, a soul that is deceitful, and then on the other side we have the voice of the devil offering the whole world a liar. On the other hand, we have the voice of God. And who will decide? Or who will decide which voice to listen to? It's you. So use your wisdom. Determine to let go of the situation. Determine. Make a pact, a vow with God. Oh my God, if your word is true, then show me right now and give me conditions to resist this satanic voice and to embrace your voice, your word, to dive into your word and to follow it day after day after day until my celestial promotion. Do that and you are going to be set free right now. You don't need anybody to place their hands on your head and pray. You don't need it. You only need yourself to determine what you want because your will is sovereign. Your will is sovereign. The young lady, Paula, she made a pact with the devil and the devil accepted it, of course. And she lived. She, she had the right to make this pact because it was her will. It was her soul. So she inclined and surrendered to the offers the devil made. And look what she reaped. Thank God one day she heard the voice of God. The testimony is there. You can watch. It's an extraordinary, an extraordinary, magnificent testimony. And today she's a new person. She has a new heart. She has a new spirit. Why? Because she decided to listen to the voice of God. That's it. And God canceled out all of her past. God canceled out her pact with the devil. And the devil has no right over her life anymore. And may this happen to you, my friend. Abandon right now, in this moment, this spirit that is tormenting you, this satanic voice that is tying your life and hold on to the promises of God. Oh my God, if you exist, as you said, Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. And he makes this invitation for Catholics, Spiritists, Muslims, believers, unbelievers, and so on. For anyone, anyone 
who listens this voice and accepts it, that's it. They make a pact with God straight away. Okay? We are going to end it here. And don't forget, today we are going to have the Night of the Soul, a very special meeting for those who want to dive into the ocean of the Holy Spirit. Do you want the Holy Spirit? Then tonight, during the day, any time of the day, the church is going to be open, and especially in the evening. And tomorrow, we are going to have the washing of the feet there in the Temple of Solomon with Bishop Renato, as he will be working with this faith to wash people's feet, those who believe, of course. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.